the toughest part is there's no limit there's no one over your shoulder it's just you and you can there's no stopping there's no cap you can deposit as much as you want you can trade over leverage you can do whatever and there's, there's nothing to stop you this episode is brought to you by my funded effect Welcome everyone to another Words of Wisdom podcast. We are back once again in the home studio and we are joined by my good friend Eunice today. Thanks for inviting me, man. Really appreciate it. No worries at all. Um, it's a pleasure to have you. And as always, we like to start off with just getting to know a bit about your journey, you know, how you got into Forex, what your sort of journey was like yeah. up until now, and then we just flow from there. Yeah, so on my last year of university, mm -hmm. um, that's when the time where crypto was booming, right? Okay. And me and a good friend, we put in some money in a, I think a crypto, it was called like Electronium or something. Mm -hmm. And it just, it was like a 30 fold, right? Yeah. And I woke up overnight and I was up like five figures from just like oh, a wow. couple hundred quid, right? Now the thing is, um, I had no strategy or nothing. It was just like, I'm going to hold this till I'm a millionaire, right? Oh, okay. And then two days later, it started like eating into my profits and I was just hopeful that it will continue going up. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, to cut the story short, um, it came back to break even. It came back to break even. Now, that basically made me think that I really enjoyed the, the, the feeling, mm -hmm. but... I wanted to know how I can be in control of my entry and exit. Yeah. Because it would just like, that would just like hopefulness, right? So then I discovered Forex. I can't remember exactly how, but I discovered it and dug into it. I mean, I started off by falling for the fancy marketing, yeah. and the big risk to rewards and everything and get rich overnight. So I basically went down that route that most traders go down, right? Mm -hmm. And literally, it was just a repeating, repeatable cycle for two, three years until I'd say around a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was never going to hang up the towel. You see, I, I'm, I've been brought up like to finish what I start, right? Especially okay. with university. Like, I did that to make my parents proud. And despite not enjoying it, I still learn. If I learn something, it'll be finish what you begin, right? Mm -hmm. So I, like I said, I was never going to give up. But I stopped because, you know, that saying Einstein says insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting yeah. different results. Yeah. yeah. That's how I felt. There was a moment in time. That's how I felt. I felt just insane. Like, why am I expecting like different? Look? So something needed to change. Right. Mm -hmm. So I left the communities like whatever community I was in, I left it. I stepped down. Um I wanted to go on like a soul search, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. yeah? And I started by ordering the Market Wizards book, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was the first book I opened up. Like I, I used to hate reading, but now I'm obsessed with it um, because there's just so much wisdom in books. Like it's mm -hmm. just crazy. Um, so I open up the book and I, I read it. And at that point, I still had the mentality of like, I'm looking for the Holy Grail. Yeah. So even in the book, I'm like flipping through the page until <laughs> something just, do you know what I mean, changes everything yeah. for me. Yeah. But that's not the case. Um, that book actually didn't really, it, it kind of like, it's like pieces to a puzzle, right? That mm -hmm. book didn't change my life or change my mindset or enlighten me in any way, but it didn't make me recognize something. That, 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 that book obviously is like an interview with like the top 50 traders or something. Mm -hmm. And the book showed me that those traders think completely different to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that was a moment for me, which led me to just continuing down that journey. And I kept finding like pieces to the puzzle, mindfulness, thinking in probabilities, detaching from the ego, self-awareness. And I realized that the whole like trading, like everybody says it's 90% 90 psychology. 
but they don't spend most time on the mindset aspect mm. of things. And I think the reason why is they don't actually know where to begin. Yeah. Because it took me like in depth searching to find like the important stuff, which is such a shame because it's not, it's just not there when you want to look for it. It's not as easy as like meditate or yeah, like, do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not yeah. that easy. It's, it's really, really a deep spiritual journey, like mm -hmm. really deep. That's why I'm always saying on my story, like I'm at war with myself. Yeah. I am every day because when you realize how much, um, conscious effort you need to make to rewire your subconscious which is ultimately controls 95 percent of our actions mm -hmm. then then you'll know so yeah no definitely and i love what you said there in terms of like 90 percent psychology we all know that term mm. but you're 100 percent right in terms of most people don't spend 90 percent of their time on the psychology either so how do we expect to have that awareness and that insight uh, one thing i want to go back to is what you mentioned in terms of books it's very interesting because a lot of people, I was one of those sort of people as well in terms of for years and years, I was like, I hate reading. I don't like reading. You know, what use is reading? It's boring. Um, and then same thing, like you start to read one, two, you start to exactly. see these insights. Exactly. But how was it? How was that shift for you? Was it literally just taking action? Um, I started like, so I started reading um, that book. I ordered the physical copy. Mm. Um, I didn't find it online. Um uh, I was doing a lot of reading online, just downloading like the PDF from reading, but I started actually enjoying the process of reading. Okay. And I realized like at the same time, I wanted to eliminate lighting at night and technology. Mm. So at the same time, like a lot was happening. Like I started to turn the volume down of the world because I needed to hear what was happening inside of me. Mm. And I ordered more books and more books and I kept finding just just more and more knowledge um until there came a point where i realized that i'm consuming too much information okay so it's almost like you know the dudes that just sit and just watch loads of youtube videos about whether it's technicals or psychology but you're mm -hmm. just consuming 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 and nothing will change until you put it into action and so i started piecing like okay i realized that mindset is not it's not one thing. It's like, like I said, you need to develop self-awareness, presence, mindfulness. How do I detach from the ego? And all of it comes into play. It's all connected. Um, it's all about, seriously, like it's all about um, being able to listen to the voice in your head. Like a lot of it comes down to that. Being able to actually sit there and become an observer of yourself. So, yeah, something that's not easy for sure. Something yeah. that takes a, a lot of time and effort, no doubt. And, you know, talking about that voice in the side of our head, when we we're trading, no doubt before you'd done that deep work and that research, that voice in the head would might be something that led you astray instead, especially in trading. I know it did for me. I remember, you know, the voice would be like, close this trade here or take this trade there. As you said, it's about rewiring your subconscious and subconscious is where, which holds a lot of our actions, a lot of our you know, reality ends up coming out of. So let's go down that journey, if you will, of uh, that sort of psychology deep dive. Where did you begin? So you begin, you started with the market wizards and that sort of opened your eyes to realize that these top traders all fought in a different manner. What was it then from there? So they, so from there, I wanted to, I wanted to start diving into like how they think and what they're thinking when they're thinking it. So for example, 95% of traders are hopeful mm -hmm. when they're in a losing trade and fearful when they're in a winning trade. So when they're in a losing trade, they're hopeful that it's going to turn, turn around and go in their desired direction. Mm -hmm. And when they're in a winning trade, they're fearful that the market is going to take their profits back. So they end up closing early. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't realize that when they close a trade early, they're now not trading what they're seeing, they're trading what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. Because what they're doing is they're feeling uncomfortable and fearful that the market's going to take their profits. So they close it. So they stop that uncomfortable feeling. Okay. Rather, these top traders expect to feel uncomfortable when they're trading. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? So that's just like one example out of a dozen that I can give you. And 
in order to reshape the way you're thinking, you need to be aware of what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. And from Market Wizards, um, I started digging into mindfulness mm-hmm. and that changed my life like forever mm. because I was reading it. You know, there's a there's a saying like you read a hundred books and then there's one book that changes yeah. everything. Yeah, there was one book um, alongside a couple others, I'd say. They changed my life because I was reading it and I came across a line that said, you are not your mind. That just, it just hit me. Just the one line. That one line has changed my life forever. Like, what was the book just, called? Um, that book was Power of Now. Oh, okay. Um, there was another book do with trading mindfully um and the reason that changed everything for me mm-hmm. is because i discovered that i'm not the thoughts and i'm not the emotions that mm-hmm. i feel i'm the observer of my thoughts mm-hmm. so what is the mind i uh personally just like the power of now i like to like call it the ego mm-hmm. and if you Ego is only when you are completely unconscious. Mm. So even if you're a bit conscious, that's not the ego. Ego is when you're completely unconscious. Now, when someone is, whether they're trading or you're arguing with a person and they turn around and they say, oh, I'm about to lose it. Okay. They're about to lose what? Mm. Their consciousness. And um, if you identify with your thoughts, mm-hmm. Like, or if you identify with your mind or with your emotions, that's the ego. Like, you're gone. You're, you're no longer, it's not you that's trading, it's your ego. Mm. See how scary that is? Yeah. And um, every day, I, like, I wake up and the question is not, what am I going to do, like, different to the 95% of failing trailers? It's just like, if it's 90% psychology... Trading is a battle with the mind. Like it's undeniable. It's, it's not a debate. Like it's a it's a it's a battle with the mind. And if it was your last exam in your last semester, how would you prepare for it? Well, how are you preparing for the biggest battle of your mind every morning? Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if you know this or what you think about it, but the majority do not prepare. They might wake up, coffee. Maybe at their best, they might have a cold shower, but that's still not enough. Mm. It, yes, a cold shower is amazing. And I've been doing it for two years and it builds mental resilience. I've actually started, when you do something for long enough, yeah. you want to you wanna self-reflect. You want to like understand how I can do it better. So in the last six months, I was just having cold showers, right? And I was resisting it until I learned what equanimity is. Mm. It's like a wave where you don't resist. You just accept good and bad. You don't label it good and bad. Mm -hmm. So I learned to stand under the shower and there should be movement. You shouldn't stand still and just accept it. Don't resist it. Don't scream. Don't Don't tense up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it's learning like, obviously with the cold showers, for example, they're powerful. They have many benefits. But at the end of the day, just doing that doesn't shift the mindset. No, because that will not rewire your beliefs. Mm -hmm. If you go, that would not stop you from going into the market with expectations. Mm -hmm. That would not change your view on winning and losing. Mm -hmm. You see, the problem is with, like, not to speak bad about anyone, but in some communities I've been in, Mm -hmm. they clap for you when you catch a win. Mm -hmm. And that's reinforcing the wrong perception of winning. Winning is when you follow your trading plan. Mm -hmm. Winning is not when you catch a winning trade. And when people start, like, we'll talk about challenges because I've gone for a dozen in the past, right? Mm-hmm. Before I became profitable. And when you when you start off with, like, a couple of losses, mm-hmm. it's not necessarily that you, like, just go into tilt. It's you want to, your brain wants to come back to a emotional equilibrium. Mm-hmm. And to do that, the next trade after the, the losses, mm-hmm. your mind will be like, yeah, let me close this at like, get back to break even. At least yeah. I'm back on that 100K in the starting capital. Yeah. But that's wrong. We don't trade to go break even. Mm-hmm. We don't even trade to win or lose. We trade 
to follow the process rather than outcome. Mm -hmm. And again, that would reinforce the wrong behavior because you're just, next time you're in a trade, you're just gonna be like, let me close half of it. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, so it's like you're, you create pathways through your exactly. habits. Neuro right? pathways. Yeah. How do you create new behavior? You have to be really aware in the moment, man. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be really aware. Like I'm, I'm talking serious. Like the conscious effort I had to use at the beginning of rewiring, mm -hmm. it gets easier, but it never means that you can come any less prepared than yesterday. Yes. So when I wake up in the morning, I don't care if the market is trending up or down. Mm -hmm. I will not sit there for an hour or half an hour doing market analysis. Okay, the thing is, I'm talking like this. This is after you're technically competent. The thing is, most people in the world, I don't believe there's a human that's unable to grasp technicals, whether mm -hmm. it's fundamentals or wedges. Or, but the mindset is a different ball game. Yeah, and you have to come prepared. And I would rather meditate, mental visualize, look at my awful trades, mm. best trades, see how I do not want to act, see who I want to be today and spend an hour doing that before the session, then spend, you know, an hour doing technical analysis. Definitely. That's the difference mm -hmm. because I'm preparing for a battle. So that's kind of going back to what you were saying about preparation. Yeah. You know, so most people aren't preparing their minds or priming their minds in the correct manner. They're just jumping on and yeah, they, like you said, they might have their coffee, they might have their little morning routine, but they're not actually preparing themselves in the correct uh, they're not, way. They're not preparing it. And one thing I realized on my journey is technically, I feel like I can't speak for everybody, but for myself, technically you hit a roof at some point until you start developing the mindset, mm -hmm. you see the market more objectively. And all of a sudden you're realizing, wow, I'm seeing opportunities that won't available to me before mm -hmm. because when you're trading from a fear-based mindset you're brushing losses like under the rug you're you're probably like i know so many people like in the past like e including myself where you'll study the losses and you'll be like yeah i've learned from that almost like just it's just you've learned from it just visually yeah but now i print out I print out the price action of every day to train my eyes. But I also, I also look at my worst trades and my best trades every morning. And I learn, I learn a lot. I learn a lot from like visuals. Like I learn a lot. Like I, I, I've learned a lot from backtesting as well, as much as my trades. Like some people say, some people don't respect backtesting. Yeah. But I mean, even Mark Douglas has said there are some people that are capable of creating a system just from backtesting and mm -hmm. recognizing 30 reoccurring patterns. Um, now, I'm not here to spend too much time talking about how I put my technical edge together. Of course. Yeah. But over the past 12 months, I've continued refining. Now, refinement doesn't look like changing any, 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 any way I trade. Refinement to me is eliminating the bad trades mm -hmm. and focusing on the top ones. Now, I remember discovering a 1% trader who, who has like a high quality setups playbook, he calls it, right? Mm -hmm. And I was watching him and I was reading about him and I realized like, wow, what if I focused on my high quality setups? Mm -hmm. And I studied them and that's what I did. I went and mastered two setups, mm -hmm. a specific setup when the market's trending and then reversals. And when I do take a reversal, where is it? Do you know what I mean? Where is it? Like who determines by uh, high or low? Not us. Mm -hmm. They do. Mm -hmm. The ones that move the market, right? So I'm not personally really like intrigued or interested by all the why, like why this liquidity is created to be yeah. taken out. Why this? I'm not interested in the why because nobody knows why. The mm -hmm. truth is, honestly, nobody knows why. We do not know what they're thinking yeah. in the moment they're clicking buy or sell. So... For me, I do go off like reoccurring patterns because the market repeats itself. Mm -hmm. But as traders, our mind thinks that just because the market repeats itself and this setup looks exactly identical to last week's, that the outcome is going to be the same. And it's not. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's it's a lot. 
So that trader you mentioned, people are going to ask, what what was the trader's name, if you remember? Um, it was a trader from Australia, um, Steve Burke. Steve, Steve Burke. Burke, yeah, Steve Burke. He's been trading for ages, right? Mm. And he's got a high quality setups. And that just opened my eyes to like, okay, let me go and study my high quality setups. Yeah. So I eliminated retracement trades. I don't take trades that's like retracing from like, the lower low to create the lower high. I realized okay. my trades from the lower high are banging out one to twenties. So I was like catching one to eights, one to tens. Yeah. But at that time I was in communities. So I would be consistent and then not consistent, consistent. It's like, and the reason was mindset, right? But when I, when I like individually worked on myself and everything, mm -hmm. honestly, like the market is limitless. Like there's nobody that can tell you like, this is not possible. This, I mean, we've got like, We've got like Tom Hoggard, who's like one of the best 1% traders, right? He's like my inspiration. The dude maximizes his wins. So he presses his winners. I'm talking like he'll make like tenfolds on the wins mm -hmm. than he did before because he doesn't he doesn't unload his full position on the first entry, right? Okay. And I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from like listening to these dudes. I mean, look, you get what you look for, right? Yeah. Not straight away. Sometimes you do have to, if you want more, you have to become more. And it's like, I've got an obsession with the mental side of trading because it's, it's just, it, it connects with like life. It connects with like even my religion. Like yes. I've managed to connect the two together, mm -hmm. like accepting uncertainty. I've had to, I've had to accept it outside of trading. I mean, life is uncertain, right? Yes. Patience. Like in my religion, patience is like, the biggest thing, the biggest thing, right? So mm -hmm. it all goes hand in hand. And did, did you find that it helped when you found these sort of overlapping features? Did it help with sort of putting the work in and, and sort of having a smoother process? Let's take a break for a minute there, guys, because I want to introduce you to our sponsor, MyFundedFX. Now, just as I'm taking over the podcast space, they're taking over the prop firm space. Now, you can trade up to 300K with MyFundedFX. They have no maximum trading days no maximum trading days it's insane i know you have to achieve eight percent in the challenge five percent in the verification and you have no time restraints you can do that in one month six months however long it takes you it's crazy i know but also on top of that there's only one minimum trading day so you can get fully funded within two days two days it's insane i'm blowing your minds right now i know but they are taking over the prop firm space now they have a two-step challenge and verification and they also have a one step make sure you use the code riz in the affiliate code section so they know that I sent you. The link is in the description, but let's get back to the episode. Yeah, like, I mean, literally um, developing, you know, the ability to be present mm -hmm. and not associate the now moment with the past moment yeah. or a future moment, that changed the game for me. I could focus better in my prayer. I could, you know, developing patience and mindfulness, I'm able to like really be in the moment. And as a trader, most lack the ability to concentrate. Mm -hmm. You see, the mind comes to the chart, right? The mind has a tendency. The mind is a problem solver. Yeah. And if there isn't a problem to solve, it will create one for you. Yeah. And when you're sat on the chart and you're waiting for a setup, Trust me, you will take a drink with not because you're thirsty, it's because you need to do something. Yeah. Like you'll check your phone, they'll scroll on Insta. I've been there, like I was mindlessly scrolling social media waiting for a setup. And you're just reinforcing this bad habit of like not being able to sit quietly. And it's it's insane. Like I can't believe like how far I've come. Like I literally used to like check my phone or go downstairs and you won't believe it, but that's your subconscious. It'll make you miss a trade. Like it'll go down. So I wanted to really dig into like, I wanted to be there. And I felt like I noticed, I noticed that my mind just, it doesn't want to sit in uncomfortableness. Right. Mm -hmm. And just like some of your other people on here, um, it's greatness. Like when they say um, you have to become comfortable being uncomfortable and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's facts, but you have to know that as traders, a lot of people have been sold like you need to be emotionless and that's not even humanly possible. Mm -hmm. The thing is about mindfulness and being present. It's not about suppressing the emotions mm -hmm. or the thoughts. It's about shining light on them. 
the moment you shine light on them, they dissolve. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So because you become aware of them rather exactly. than them being like a surprise or a shock. Yeah, like because if you if you come to the chart and you expect like to not feel nervous or I mean, these 1% traders, they feel uncomfortable. They mm. have the same thoughts we have. The only difference making them the 1% is the way they respond to their thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted to dig into this. I think it's super important. And this has helped traders around me tremendously. And I hope it helps the viewers. Um, the So this whole thing with not identifying with the mind. So the moment you identify with a thought or with an emotion, mm -hmm. That's the ego. You become unconscious, right? Now, I'll give you a great example. So if you're arguing with a person, right, and you started to develop like presence, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 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 coming out. You're, you're, you've, you've decided, you've started practicing. So before I talk about the challenge, you want to practice being present in your daily life. Mm -hmm. So before you try to, practice it in challenging situations. Mm -hmm. So when you're walking in nature, when you're driving, when you're talking to someone, you literally just want to practice being there, right? And when when you are in a challenging situation and someone like, like you get angry, for example, at the beginning, there's stages to it and it's insane because I've experienced it in mm -hmm. trading. It's, it's actually insane. So, so like at the beginning, the beginning stage is like you realize mm -hmm. after by an hour, even a day later, shit, like what happened yesterday, like yeah. just blew up, like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. As your presence develops, you'll recognize that you lost your anger just moments later. Mm -hmm. As it develops further, you recognize in the middle of it. But guess what? You can't stop it. It's like fight or flight mode. You mm -hmm. can't, your, your body's already decided to react. So you can't stop yourself, right? Then there comes a time where you'll be able to recognize that you're about to get angry, right? So have you, have you like ever seen or experienced like being angry at someone before you actually get angry at them? So you're, you're, you're like going to find them. You're going to like yeah, yeah. lose your temper at them. <laughs> your mind's screaming at you like, <laughs> how could they say that? Or how could they do that, right? Yeah, exactly. So they'll come to a point where at the beginning, mm -hmm. before you even, like as anger's creeping in, your presence and self-awareness has crept in mm -hmm. and you'll be able to be in the position to decide, do I identify with that pain body or how do you want to respond? Yeah, And that is what I've implemented in my trading and it's changed the game. So when I'm trading and I'm, I'm in a trade and I've taken two, three losses in a row, mm -hmm. I expect my mind to pop up, right? Okay. I expect that voice to come up and say, you need to make that back or, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, and when I began changing these pathways or behavior, behavioral patterns, mm -hmm. I, I reached for the mouse, clicked. Okay. I realized after like, oh, what have I just done? Like, who was that? Mm -hmm. Because your subconscious, I call it the reptile brain. It wants to do everything you don't want it to do, right? It wants to avoid pain. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been there where I'd move the stop loss as well. Because remember, you're uncomfortable, but the pain's only confirmed once the loss happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, then there, there came a time where like, I catch myself reaching for the mouse mm -hmm. about to commit a wrong action and I still can't stop myself. Then there came a time where I can hear the voice that is going to lead me to, to do it. reach it. And yeah. I stopped it. And I've done that so much times now that alhamdulillah, like I can, I can, I can control my emotions. So that's where the whole rewiring comes in. Exactly. Right? So it's See? like, you're not, you don't just do it like this. No. Your mindfulness happens like this because you want to create change, but then only through habit and being self-aware over and over it makes it more natural. But as you said earlier, which is, I think is very important, is that just because you've done it for X amount of time now, a long period of time, and just because that consistency is there, you still have to do and turn up and be prepared every single day. You have to turn up every single day so prepared because it's so easy to fall back in the old patterns. Mm -hmm. 
um, it takes a while to develop new patterns mm -hmm. and you are still every day facing uncertainty. Whether you've developed the patterns or not, you are facing uncertainty and your subconscious cannot deal with uncertainty. And to the ego, fear of failure, fear of loss, fear of missing out. Do you know what that means? Death to the ego. Mm -hmm. That means death to the ego. So that's why when someone's in an argument and they really want to win the argument, losing the argument means death to the ego. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to come prepared because it's always going to be there. I mean, I have watched a 1% trader take some enormous positions and I've watched them like, like you can tell they're in a trade and it's like they're right in the trend. And their mind, you know, they've explained that their mind's telling them, like, close the trade. Like, you can get a new car for your son, like, with this money. Like, mm -hmm. what if this comes back to break even? And they've they've already mentally visualized themselves every morning. Mm -hmm. They've mentally visualized themselves riding a trend and that voice telling them to close early. Mm -hmm. And self-discipline, as Mark Douglas says, is the ability to refocus on the objective mm -hmm. and yeah it takes practice because they've these guys have mentally visualized it enough times mm -hmm. that they're actually used to it because your brain doesn't know the difference between an imagination and reality mm -hmm. if you imagine it like really vivid with like emotions so when i began mentally rehearsing i used to do it wrong so mm -hmm. I used to do it wrong because I used to mentally visualize a challenging situation such as like my perfect setup presenting itself, yeah. placing the trade, taking a loss and remaining calm. Mm -hmm. but I'm lying to myself because the correct way is to actually rehearse the challenging situation and what's going to happen. Like when you take a loss, your mind's going to tell you to like, do this or do that and then you take maybe i might take diaphragmatic like belly breathing and, okay. then, and then see myself being calm so i'm actually like rehearsing the challenging situation what my old self would want to do and how i would want to act mm -hmm. rather than from there to here do you know what i mean yeah so you're, you're being aware of what you would actually do now but then what you want to change to become exactly yeah exactly it's incredible and uh you know during this process no doubt as you say it wasn't easy it wasn't something that just happened overnight but it was through the repetition you know and i think something you mentioned earlier is that you're obsessed you know you became obsessed with the mindset yeah. and what do you think in terms of obsession you know i i believe it's necessary to be obsessed with whatever you're trying to be successful at yeah i love that that's a really good question because when i used to go gym about two years ago mm -hmm. I'd go gym, I'll stop after a few weeks, I'd go again, I'll stop after a few days, I'd go again. The same as like someone trying to quit a cigarette, like they would, I've seen people like literally quit maybe a month or two and then mm -hmm. they're back on it. Now, I used to go to gym and I remember like, <laughs> I remember like I never used to want to label myself as a gym freak, okay. right? <laughs> especially on like a dating app. But mm -hmm. the thing is, um, looking back now i'm like yeah you have to be, you, you you have to become obsessed because right now like like i have to treat gym just like i treat the other aspects of my life like i go every day right and i do a lot of cardio i don't know if you've seen it i did that 100 mile run in 15 yeah days, i saw yeah the charity yeah so i I'm all about like, you know, that David Goggins, mm -hmm. I, I'm all into that, right? And again, I don't need to watch him a lot or read a lot because I took what I needed. I completely understand the message and I've mm -hmm. integrated it. And um, like he says, you have to find it within yourself. And yeah, like going gym, you go from like, I went from going gym to going consistently to writing down like tracking my workout every day. Now I go gym, I track like, okay, I did this much reps today mm -hmm. and just completely trying to, trying to improve each week. Yeah. And yeah, like yeah, I, I completely think you have to become obsessed with it. I think so yeah. as well. You know, in terms of uh, what you mentioned earlier, actually, you kind of touched on it there, which is people find themselves stuck in consuming. 
right? Consuming knowledge, just mm. consuming over and over. And they read a hundred books, but they think, why haven't I, you know, why has nothing changed for me? And as you said there, like you used to listen to David Goggins, but you took the message and then you just implemented it. Okay. And I think you said earlier that you were one of those people there before where you just consume. How did you make that bridge? Uh, the bridge was not so long ago. Like it was within the last six months, mm. honestly, because it's like you, it's, a, it's, I think it's a mindset or something because like you, I'm consuming information and I'm just like, wow, I'm on to the next video, like related video. Mm. It's like, wow, like, again, and it's like how much, how much videos about the great morning routine do you want to watch? Mm -hmm. How much videos about mindfulness do I want to watch before I go and develop mindfulness? How much video about how to mentally visualize am I going to go and watch? So I was like, something's wrong again, right? Mm -hmm. So so like it, it's part of becoming self-aware. Like, honestly, like I wouldn't have caught myself being such a consumer if I didn't develop self-awareness. Mm -hmm. So I realized like I'm consuming. So just like David Goggins and many others, I didn't need to hear it from David Goggins to realize like the importance of turning turning the noise down. Everything becomes noise. Like even people, like I've cut down, like I, I rarely listen to music, like literally because I just really, really um, put importance on what goes in my eyes, my ears, my mouth. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I put a lot of importance on that because, you know, um, it's it's just super important to me to 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 be able to listen mm -hmm. to to the voice. Um, you know, I don't want to talk about the voices because <laughs> there's the ego, there's this, there's there's the devil. But it's about like for me, it's it's just about like honestly, it's minimizing, you know, the noise because everything becomes a distraction. And yeah. I wanted to I wanted to um structure my life. I wanted to I I just asked myself, like, who do you want to be? And trader is great, but it's not the most important thing to me, right? Mm. Because of religion, it's not the most important thing to me. Like I can't, I can't take my trading skill with me after I go, but I could take my good actions, right? So mm. I've got like these pillars I made for myself, right? In mm. like my notion, and I've just been fully committed to following it because it's process oriented, but it's gonna lead to my best version mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me today, you know, is this the best version? It is. If you come to me next month, I'll be the best version I've ever been because I would have suppressed today's actions and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've got like faith, I've got mind, body, and then career, which is trading. And then I've got like within them small pillars yeah. and what I want to become and achieve every like three, four months. I just like assess it. I think self-reflection we should talk about. It's a big thing. Oh, definitely. Definitely, because uh, self -re self reflection in trading, for example, is a massive thing. But in life, it's even bigger, because in trading, it's necessary. Otherwise, you just stay in that same cycle, as you said. Majority of people stay in, which is just over and over, losses, wins, losses, wins, that boom and bust cycle. Um, and without self reflection, you will never get out of that. Right? You'll never get out of that. Let alone, as you're saying as well, about progressing and being your best version. I think a lot of people don't put a lot of weight of who they are. You know, they, as you say as well, like self awareness. They're not they're not aware of who they are. They just you know, without silencing the noise, as you mentioned as well, they're just going through life distracted, you know, and just consuming. And uh, one thing I will say is that if you aren't careful of what you consume, it will consume you versus if you are careful of what you consume, then it can empower you and allow you to, to lift yourself up. So because I think it's a very important point you said about, you know, sort of turning down the noise, because it's so true. All we have nowadays is phones, YouTube videos, TikTok, Instagram, movies, um, even when we're out and about with friends, most of the time the phones are out. The, yep. you know, there is no my, you know, silent moments no more. Exactly. Know? If you start thinking about your age and your future, mm -hmm. you know, you start like, it's scary when you realize like, wait a minute, like how much of these things are actually bringing value to mm -hmm. who I'm trying to become and what I'm trying to accomplish. And I've realized, wait, so all this music doesn't bring value to my faith my body, my mind, and my trading cut out. Okay, people, social media, these YouTube videos, like, like I've never downloaded TikTok, right? But whatever you're doing, it's like, if you ask yourself how much value, it's like, like barely any of it. Mm -hmm. And um, 
self-reflection is a big thing. It's very, very hard. That's why a lot of people don't do it. Like it's very hard, like very, because I believe like people should spend like one third of their day self-reflecting, but some people won't find the time to do that, mm -hmm. which, which is one of the reasons I got into trading because of time freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you've heard the saying that our thoughts shape our future, right? Yeah. Well, in neuroscience, they say like 95% um, of our actions are the same as yesterday. Yeah. And that's the reason that most people are recreating the past rather than creating the future. Mm. Well, how could you, how will you create the future if you're unaware of your thoughts? That's the whole point. That's what I mean. That's, that's what changed the game for me when I realized like, whoa, I've just separated myself from the pack and I'm going this way now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're deciding to think different. Yeah, you're not deciding to be it, one of the same. Exactly. That's why I've got that thing. It's like control your mind, control your future. Because, mm -hmm. Yeah, literally. How much did that um, sort of seclusion, as you said, you took yourself out of the groups? Because it's actually a common theme from the last like three or four podcasts I've recorded now that are yet to come out. But it's a very common theme that people went through isolation. You know, they, they isolated themselves. And through doing that, it allowed them to grow massively. Partly, obviously, being away from the noise, but mo probably was that a big part of obviously that self reflection? Massive part. Um, I was like, I had to, when I discovered, like, okay, who I am, who I'm not, okay, I'm not the ego, I started to challenge my initial actions. So, if wh whether you've noticed or not, I haven't posted results in months now mm -hmm. and the reason is is because i had to ask myself am i posting for glory or for ego validation who who is it that's posting and of course like a lot of people tell me like please don't stop posting like you're inspiring like all the traders right yeah but i wanted to show everybody the process before i even got the results which was crazy because i had such self-belief that I knew I had found the way, the <laughs> blueprint. Yeah. I, I just I just knew I found it, right? Like so so like I all I do now or have done recently is just like share the process, the process. Like I talk about the morning routine that I got from the Miracle Morning book. Yeah. I talk about like how to become process oriented. You know, I talk about how to detach from the ego and so on. Because initially, like all of this, that's what's going to lead to the outcome that people are desiring. But most people don't know, you know, if I if I ask traders, like, do you know what skills are required, like, to develop the mindset? They, they don't actually know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is worrying. But that's because you haven't, energy flows where your attention goes. And your attention is just on technicals. The moment you start shifting it to psychology, it will find you, it will meet you. I mean, yeah, hundred percent. Because, like you said earlier, in terms of the technicals ability, like I, I truly believe as well that majority, if not everyone, can learn technicals, mm. right? Even if it takes them longer exactly. than than some others, but it's just like textbooks, like school. You're just learning chart patterns and diagrams, etc. Same with fundamentals. You're just learning information and and definitions. But psychology is a whole different ballgame. You know, it's a whole different ballgame. Like I always tell people, think about what you're thinking about just to keep it short that's like just start there just start there like just spend 24 hours thinking about what you're thinking about and you will be like astonished because imagine imagine like when you can hear how you talk to yourself mm -hmm. you'll be like whoa because you won't be talking to a friend like that like after a loss or something you might feel like oh i'm a loser or ah, oh, like or, or you just like doubt in things that you're just scared to lose someone like someone comes into your life and they're like you've wanted this person and you start like beginning to like have fear of like losing this person you have to realize that because you will end up losing the person if you're really scared to lose them. Yeah. so you know um yeah like my, my advice to everybody that really actually wants results in trading is to start thinking about what you're thinking about and start just really dig into the mindset side of things because if you're just if if you're just if you haven't created results today you know and you feel like you're doing everything technically you can you probably are you 
probably are. It's, it's, it's the mindset side of things that's mm-hmm. holding people back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I say it to people a lot. Like, if you're not willing to change in the mindset, you might as well quit because you're not going to get anywhere. You will stay in that cycle, right? If you're not willing to put in the work that is necessary to improve your mindset, to build your self-awareness and your self-accountability, you're not going to progress. And all you're going to do is just continue to throw money at challenges or education or uh, accounts and uh, just end up losing more and more money and deepening those negative neural pathways. Exactly that. And one thing I've realized for myself, and it, it did happen late, like I can't, I can't say, oh, thank you. I'm glad I happened sooner than now. I realized this late and I hope people realize it now is change happens gradually. Mm-hmm. Whether you're increasing your lot size or whether you're, it's the things I'm talking about, developing the mindset, it happens gradually. And the biggest, one of the biggest words for trading is acceptance. Because acceptance is just as powerful as like patience. Acceptance is accepting that you might have to knock your risk down Mm -hmm. to a point where you're not like trying to trying to make money or thinking about the money Mm -hmm. and you can actually develop the mindset like you know with a risk that you can tolerate make it a bit still a bit challenging otherwise you're not going to feel like it's rewarding and you're going to have to accept that and slowly you know build on that and that's where most people are what i've noticed which i didn't notice because i've been there is everybody's trying to make money while they develop the skill Mm -hmm. they don't understand the skill is technicals and mindset it's not it's not like just technicals do i mean so they're trying to get funded whilst they like it's like driving a ferrari Mm -hmm. whilst you learn how to drive like you can't you can't do that. Like, I, like honestly, like, I can't emphasize on like how important it is. You can't do challenges or trade a funded account whilst you're developing the mindset. You can't. The subconscious is like a very serious thing. You have to know what you're facing, like when you're set in front of the chart. Mm-hmm. So I would say like, yeah, like step back, you know, step back, sit, take some time off. And then they, they need to, like what I did personally is I, I wrote, I made a list of like what I need to develop. Like I needed to know like what skills I need to develop technically mm-hmm. and mindset wise. Do you know what I mean? No, hundred percent. So it's like preparation, mm-hmm. you know, preparation. So if we take the Marines, for example, um, you know, the reason why they go through these you know, severe and aggressive and really, really daunting um, training, right? I think what do they call it? They have a word for it. I can't remember the name for it though. Um, Nope, it's not coming to mind. <laughs> I was going to try. Um, I can't think of it. I'm sure someone yeah. will put it in the comments. But um, but yeah, why they put them through such heavy training is in terms of preparation for what they're going to face out there. Exactly. Right? And, you know, it's like, as you said, imagine you took someone who's in a comfy bed and then just threw them into war. That person's gone. The, the, the likely chance of them surviving is extremely slim. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, like you said, obviously, if you people don't put a lot of weight into preparation, I think they're drifting. You know, so therefore they feel like they're putting work in and they feel like they're prepared just because they've watched a video here or watched a forecast or done the chart work and then they turn up. But as you say, without that actual, you know, foundation built internally, the external is not going to you know, be able to hold up. Exactly. So I couldn't um, agree more. That that reminded me of like, um, I don't know if you saw like recently on my story, I took a dig at like, not a dig, but like, you know, like these massive, um, these massive, these massive like seminars that happen in like, islands and stuff, like motivational speaking ones, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I just, I just gave my opinion. Like my opinion's not a dig, right? It's just my opinion. And my opinion was that some of these like Tony Robbins show and stuff, like, because I actually have a friend that attended one of them, mm-hmm. and like if you watch the videos, like you'll notice that they're celebrating. Yeah, they're celebrating the fact that they've decided to start exercising. Yeah. And it's like, your brain literally has a tendency to say, yo, Eunice, um, all right, you're, you're going to stop eating junk food from Monday, yeah? Great job, man. Amazing. Well done. 
all right, when's the next time we're going to eat junk food? Because I've just rewarded you. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like... It's like a it's, false happiness, a yeah, false cheer. Yeah, like before the process, before the hard work even begins. But what are traders doing? Yeah, what are traders doing? And what measures have they put in place when you're not doing the very things you promised yourself to do? Mm -hmm. Like what, what are you gonna do in them situations? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's 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 hard work and that that is there's I've I've actually like experienced that where like I got a bit happy when I decided to like stop a bad habit. Mm -hmm. Like I got happy and almost actually celebrated by having a cookie or something. Yeah. Do you know what so I mean? It's like self sabotage and straight away. Yeah, yeah. Like it's insane. setting yourself up for failure type thing. Mm -hmm. One thing I'll ask you actually, you know, in terms of that. So like, you know when you're planning to do something, mm. right? You're planning to, let's say, take a challenge, mm. right? Mm. And how do you then come to the challenge before when you've already had these sort of negative pathways? And you've had, I mean, you mentioned that you'd failed challenges before. Yeah, yeah, loads. So what was it like then when you've done that, right? And gone through that process and, you know, as we know, it kind of builds and builds and builds the more that you fail and you start to convince yourself and identify as like a terrible trader. What was it like then when you you had done that work, taken that step back, done that work, and then you came to do the the next challenge? It is like complete different person because mm -hmm. like literally the person doing that challenge was I had goals like you've mentioned like my goal was to be in the leadership board like I've actually stepped down from trading my funded to trading like someone I know a personal fund mm -hmm. because it just removed that ego when I trade that on like IC markets yeah whatever broker. I have no thoughts of like oh, one more, one more, one to 20. And I could be at the leadership board. Whereas I had that. And it's just like, I would remove it if I had, because who am I, who, who am I trading for me mm -hmm. or like, do you know what I mean? Like social yeah. media. So, so like, it's a different person because like I said, when I was doing challenges, I felt like getting funded was associated to my self-worth. Mm -hmm. right um that was a huge thing that literally meant like every time i failed i felt like a failure right but that step back i took and the space between that and today is completely trading does not define me it does not define my happiness how cool i am how how i feel as a person mm -hmm. it's, it's it's not to do it's, 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 do you know what I mean it's not do you think it did it come from when you said you did that sort of hierarchy and you realized that trading wasn't the sort of end goal, wasn't really as important as you think. Do you think that was a defining moment to have yeah. that switch? Great, great. You're fully in the moment. Recognizing. <laughs> yeah, hundred um, percent. That that was part of, that was a huge thing that gave me the ability to detach my results from myself with yes. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, how, like, when I went down my spiritual journey and I became closer to God, I was like, how is failing a challenge or like a losing day keeping me up at night? Mm -hmm. But missing all my prayers is not keeping me up at night. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's not making sense. So when I realized like my priorities were all wrong, mm -hmm. everything had to change. And when I, when I put like my faith in the middle and everything is around it now, mm -hmm. yeah, everything, like the times I go to gym, everything has to be around it. Then it worked out well because I can go sleep now feeling like I've done everything I could. I could always do more hundred percent, but I'm content. I'm just like, do you know what? Like, I've done my five daily prayers. I've done this. Mm -hmm. like, I've done my session. And yeah, it's not. It's not, it's not, it's not the dominator of my life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think there's several reasons why it was the dominator. Um, you know, I've literally been uh, in the past, I've traded to fill a void. Yeah. Um, some people trade to fill their loneliness. Some people, like I said, associate with their self-worth. They want to feel like a winner. Um, there's so many reasons. And yeah, I had to, like I said, it's deep work. It really is, yeah. No, hundred percent. Because one thing you alluded to earlier was like the different characters, if you will, or how I have uh, perceived how you do it is obviously you have your ego, you have your greed, uh, you have the devil, like you said. You probably have the angel and the positive voices too. So, do you, by observing these things and these thoughts, and as you said, listening to yourself, have you been able to sort of dissect and characterize these different feelings? Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's quite like 
like it's not weird. I think people might think it's weird, but like I think it's I think it's super necessary. Mm-hmm. As insane as it is, it's super necessary because I need to know my enemy. Um, I feel like I feel like the more I know and dissect what's what, the more I also know when it's me that's that's the site making a decision, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that that's what's scary. Like, I mean, look, people that whether you know about faith or not, a lot of people have experienced being emotionally hijacked mm-hmm. where you just blow an account. Like you're almost going to blow an account, but you want to blow account. So you want to get over and done with. So there's no more money to play with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know what you, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then after you're sat there, like, what have I done? And I'm going to come back. You take like a two, three, three day break and you feel like that break is enough. You come back and you're like, I'm never going to do that again. And you do it again because your mind's still the same. This is what I'm trying to tell you to. You have to change the mindset. But that moment where you sit there, you're like, whoa, what just took over me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what took over you? Good question. Yeah, and then it's like breaking down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, breaking it down. So I knew a guy who put in a thousand pound into account to test himself, you know, be disciplined on this account, blew that, instantly loaded up five grand. And then probably in the headspace of like, I just needed more money, blew that straight away as well. And it's exactly like you said, emotionally hijacked. I know I've experienced it in my journey. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, it comes down to that self-reflection. I remember I remember you mentioning actually at the start where you said you weren't giving up, but you had a moment where you realized you had to change. And it's like an ultimatum. Did you give yourself that sort of ultimatum moment? Yeah, there, there was so much like in that one moment. Like there was another thing which was like, I think like, like I looked at like, like I heard, I heard something from a video that said like, your equity curve is like, this is your results. It's your like, that, that, that tells you how you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, wait, could I be experiencing like addiction to like losing or just like, as long as I'm playing, like, I don't mind so much because you can get addicted to unhappiness, right? Yeah. It's like, as long as I'm in the game and I've got money to play with, yeah, because I've always been good with money. I've always, I've always had money like that. So it's like, am I just, as long as I've got money to deposit, like, like I had to, I had to just stop, like stop me like, bro, I actually want to make big money from trading. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So do you think the entry barrier being quite low obviously to trade you can pretty much deposit 100 pound into an account for example do you think that's it's kind of feeds into kind of an addiction behavior because for a lot of people here anyway in the western world 100 pound spare per month i say spare but in quotations um they could quite easily keep fueling and funding this account yeah i think i think the 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 toughest part is there's no limit there's no one over your shoulder it's just you and you can, there's no stopping. Like there's just no, there's no cap. Yeah. So you know what I mean, yeah. literally like you can deposit as much as you want. You could trade over leverage. You could do whatever. And there's, there's nothing to stop you. And, um, and there, there's so much variables about trading. Like it's so like, there's so much variables, like such as like, you know, like you might, you might actually like I've been there like where you, you deposit money. I think this happened just before I I took a big break, right? Or like I deposited money there, like a thousand. Mm-hmm. And then I turned it into two thousand by risking like five percent. And then I turned like I lost like a couple hundred and then I turned that into like five thousand. I lost like two thousand, then turned it into like seven thousand. And then you start, I'll be honest, like that, that taught me what euphoric is. Like mm-hmm. I was so euphoric that I started to think like, oh, okay. If I continue just risking 5%, I can make like half a million, a couple yeah. more trades. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think when you experience winning the wrong way, yeah, reinforces a bad habit. hundred yeah. percent. So do you know what I mean? So when these traders deposit money and they, they, they will experience winning. I mean, you, you like to win a trade, people don't realize that to win a trade, you just have to click a button. You could, you could literally just end up with two, even three wins in a row, but eventually it will catch up. It will mm-hmm. catch up mm-hmm. you know every I mean? time. Yeah. And no, every time. And one thing I like from watching your um, social media for a while now, because the way I actually came across you was because I think I'd come across your page a while ago. Mm-hmm. 
like maybe a few years ago. And then uh, I might have got a new page and I just didn't see you for a while. But then someone recommended you um, a couple of times when I'd put out like, who should I get on the pod? And it's taken us a while to get there because I was traveling and I stuff. So apologies. It. But um, but yeah, I remember seeing uh, something I loved was like at your desk, you had, I don't know if they're whiteboards or sticky notes, mm. but you have like W, L, yeah, L, yeah. W. What, what's that? What's that process? What is that for you? Um, that for me is thinking in probabilities. Mm-hmm. I've got like 10 to 20 sticky notes. Mm mm-hmm. And it's just re-emphasizing. It's for me. It's just like re. Do you know what I mean? Reinstilling that mindset of like, okay, like I've waited. I've waited for a high quality setup. Took the trade. Okay, loss. No problem. On to the next one. Mm-hmm. It's showing me visually because I work visually really well. Yeah. So it's showing mm-hmm. me visually that there's a lot of trades, man. But rather than being like in the past, I was so fixated on one trade. Yeah. Like my life depended on that trade. So that kind of helped me a lot. Do you know what I mean? That helped me a lot because I just know literally if I follow the process, I'm 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 allowed to lose more than 10 trades in a row. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I remember um so recently I had a trading um accountability coach, yeah, that I got okay. for myself, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he trades like a massive private investors account, right? Yeah. And I remember sharing like some of his stats on my social media. It said like thousands of trades he's taken. His biggest losing streak was 17 losses in a row. Wow. And I got so many DMs saying like, oh my God, this helps me like so much, gives me reassurance, this and that. It's like they've been, a lot of us have been sold like perfectionism as well. Yeah. Like it's not okay to lose. It's like, mate, I had like, a losing streak like a month or two ago it was like my biggest losing streak and then i and then i stuck to the process i caught a win and then just took the account back to like six percent or seven percent in profit do you know what i mean yeah so it's 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 you know i mean like that that was surprising because for a lot of people they they thought like these big traders are mm. like no like the biggest i study them in depth like i i spend hours a day studying one percent traders and they they have like, you know, their their winning percentage is like 30, 40%, 50% at best. But they press their winners. When they win, they win big. When they lose, they lose small. They you, you break even, you lose small, you win small, or you win big. But they've eliminated losing big. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it sounds simple, right? It sounds simple, but obviously the reality is that what is that bridge? It's that mindset that you've been talking it's the about. Mindset, yeah. And when you went through that losing period then. Um, you know, what was your mindset like then, especially before you hit the win? Yeah. What, so, what was that depth like then? Yeah. So like it, it it's gotten easier um, over the re- recent months, but it's never like that easy. Like I'm not going to like sit and it, it's very hard. Like I, I sit there and have to use a lot of conscious effort because mm-hmm. the more losses I'm taking, the stronger that voice is becoming. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the moment I go unconscious or I'm distracted by something, that voice can creep up and make me do something automatic. So as I'm taking these losses, and like I said, even myself, I've my trading coach has seen my like he's seen my stats and stuff, and he's impressed, but he still said, I want you to lower the risk. And I'm just like, really though? Like at the beginning, I was like, yeah. And then I came back to him and I kind of like debated it because it means I'm going to make less money like now. Mm-hmm. And, um, but eventually I was just like, look, what's the problem? Like you want this mindset, you want the 1% mindset, you're going to have to do what it takes, right? Yeah. And I was like, I accepted it. I was like, look, I'm going to drop the, I'm going to drop the risk so I can just fully focus on the process, like taking a bunch of like 30 trades in a row following my trading plan, right? Mm-hmm. Um. And that's hard. Like, that's hard. Like, I've done it like a couple of times, but I'm still trying to do that. I'm still trying to take 20, 30 trades in a row, stick into my high quality setup, stick into the same risk. Because sometimes, you know, like, even I was watching an interview with like Tom Hoggard and like he, not even an interview, in his book in March 2022, his friend rang him and said that oil is flying. So what does he do? Jumps on the chart, does his does a little quick analysis. He thinks he's done his analysis, but does a little quick one, places a trade, takes a big loss, puts a stop loss where he thinks it's safe. Take, this is March 22. 
This is March 2022. We're talking about a 1% trader. We're talking about a high stake trader here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes hundreds of thousands of pounds like a month. Moments later, he realized he realized what he's done, that he's trading based off like his friend's bias and stuff. Mm -hmm. He did an analysis, waited for a proper pullback, got in, banged out a great trade. So I'm just showing you that even these guys, it's human he error. made a mistake last yeah. year and he's been trading consistently for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I've got people I've communicated with that have been following him for years. He's been smashing it out like for years, right? So yeah, I'm just showing you that it can, it can happen. It can creep up, but... Just that self awareness can save you. Do you know what I mean? So I still make mistakes, but they're just not detrimental. They're not. They're not. They're not like oh, I've just dug a massive hole in my account that I can't come back from. They're yeah. not them mistakes anymore. Do you know what I mean? Just keeping them small. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think it was something that uh, Blackwatch when he came on the podcast and he was saying that you know we're human at the end of the day. We're going to make human errors, right? And our job isn't to allow them. Our job is to limit them and try and learn from them and try and have zero, but to think that we're going to be perfect and as human beings, we're never going to make a mistake ever is setting ourselves up for failure, right? And uh, yeah, I think it's the same thing where a lot of people assume that one day you will learn a strategy or a technique, or like you said, some holy grail in one of these pages, right? Mm. They think one day there's going to be something that makes trading easy, right? Where they can get on the chart and then just say, the market's going to go there, there, and there, I'll buy, sell, buy, sell, whatever, and the strike rate is going to be like 80, 90 percent or maybe 100 percent. They assume there's something out there or an eventual amount of time or experience where suddenly it's just easy. It's just not the case. It doesn't exist. Nah, it's it's a gradual process and it's facts what you just said. Um, I think that was one of the things that took me the longest to do. And I'm still doing it, which is like maybe maybe I was a perfectionist. Who knows? But one of the things was to to embrace mistakes and failure and that recently has helped me become much better at losing mm. i mean does it sound insane if i tell you i sometimes jump on the chart and place a trade just to start the week with a loss like i walk into it i know it sounds crazy <laughs> it <but> does <laughs> yeah it sounds crazy but i did that a couple of times mm. because i need to i needed to take punches I needed to take, I needed to face what I'm scared of. Mm -hmm. I know one dude, yeah. So he was like scared of spiders. And he, it's another 1% trader, but he's got a story where he's scared of spiders. He went and spent two years studying the history of spiders and their behavior and everything. So he can face his fears. Mm. I needed to take punches. I needed to face the very thing that I'm proper scared of, which mm. was hitting stop loss. Yeah. So what I did is that was a bit mad, but... I took time to be able to do that because I don't mind. I don't mind right now just going and just losing two hundred and fifty dollars because I'm really like I'm really like looking forward and excited to coming back from that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wanna um, the challenge. Yeah, like I wanna I wanna like like some people won't think like it's real, but seriously, like it's it's walking into it. Yeah, just, just it's like chucking yourself in the deep end, right? Mm -hmm. Like. For me, it's like I needed to become good at losing, right? Mm -hmm. And I needed to accept like losses. And um, one thing that helped me loads was in that very moment that I'm about to take a loss, I'm aware that that's I'm vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. I'm vulnerable after like a couple of losses. So what I did is, like I said, again, I've used a lot of conscious effort to be present and sit in it. Mm -hmm. Like I literally just want to go down to the kitchen after like the two lost, but no, I sit in it. I sit in it. I've got people, right? I had a guy in my group that said like, when the market is quiet, he closes the laptop and walks off. Now, like a year ago, I'd actually give him a round of applause. I'd be like, I do the same. But you know, today, mm -hmm. I've sat here today, today, and I've waited 16 days for a setup. 16 days yeah some of those days the market was literally consolidating do you think i'm gonna walk off no why because i need exposure to uncertainty just because it's consolidating and i know i'm not gonna place a trade i'm building patience i'm building patience is my patience gonna develop more if i close the computer and walk off or if i actually sit there when it's mm -hmm. consolidating what do you think 
my patient's going to develop, right? Yeah. Because just because there isn't a trade, but there's patients being developed, mm -hmm. right? And I had to do that loads of times. You had to force yourself to sell. Yeah. Your so yeah. I no longer just walk off like when there's. We could do that in the future, like when you've developed the, the, the top mindset and you just know, all right, like, it doesn't look like there's going to be a setup today because I'm still developing my mindset to face and accept uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So I, I need more hours rather than I actually sometimes now I'm doing two sessions because I need more hours. I want more hours in front of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to trade as less as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Because yes, that's the goal. That's the goal to trade less for more, but need more exposure in front of uncertainty. You want to build that tolerance. Exactly. The only way to do that at speed would be not to rush or not that you're rushing, but to do it at speed, you need more time, exactly. more experience. No, 100% makes sense. And, you know, in terms of uh, your journey, you, well, not even your journey, from watching your social media for a period of time, you travel quite often. Yeah. Um, why is, is that something like a, a sort of solitude break? And when you do travel, you don't just travel to say touristy spots, you know? Yeah. You travel and you experience what seems to be actual culture, you know, actual yeah, locals yeah, yeah. and spend time in actual local people. Uh, what's that for you? You know, what does it do for you? Um, like personally, um, I like I do it alone, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like I think I went Morocco with my brother, but he spent two weeks and then I threw away the return ticket. And I think that was like one of the first moments where I experienced that goal of like, because because trading also came into play where I was once, um, I was once in the Middle East or something and I was having a great time and I had to come back because of my job, I had to come back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, one day, just one day, there'll be a time where I will be having a good time and I could just stay, I could just extend it. Yeah. And that happened last year and that was like incredible. It's like surreal, like surreal to just be able to throw away that return ticket and just stay for until I got bored. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I go to places, I pick places that will resonate with my soul because I, I'll be honest with you, um, I got to be careful because I can't say, oh, this country is not good for myself. But it's like, you can say anything. Man. For Don't me, worry. I'm thinking like, I've been to Dubai when I was younger and I've never been again. Mm -hmm. Now, I would go, I would go, but the reasons might be different. Um, I personally would rather like, right now, I'd rather pick like I'm thinking of like Asia now. I'd rather pick like somewhere that's, I'm always, like everything I do, I'm always thinking about my pillars, mm -hmm. faith, mind, body, trading. Mm -hmm. So if I went to like, like if I went somewhere, then I'm just thinking like, is that going to impact those I'll start with my faith because mm. I don't want to jeopardize my faith. I don't want to put it at risk because yes, you can have strong faith, but you're also told to try and avoid places that can impact it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so um, so I'll go places that like I feel like do you know what it'll be good spiritually. Do some training, Muay Thai, whatever, trading like the time zone, mm -hmm. explore the culture, speak the same language, something like that. And yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, yeah. But the thing is, one thing I've realized is my work rate is nothing like when I'm in the UK. Really? Yeah, I call this the trenches because like I'm not... It's I'm, cold, it's I'm, miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you're, you're just forced. You're just like, I just know it here, like the back of my hand. I know like it's it's just i could stick to a routine here yeah. but it's there like i thought i can do it and i was in morocco yeah and i've signed up to a gym for one month like the top gym and i'm doing loads of running there and like pull-ups and stuff but the feeling is not the same like it's like it's like training hard like while you're like in a beautiful ocean like it's just there's something different about it the hunger's not the same mm, the comfort kind of brings i feel like what i do here in one day i could do it took me 30 days to do that. Like I uh, like there, like I was outside most of the time mm -hmm. and not a lot of like, I'll be honest with you, not a lot of like development happens outside. Mm. The thing is, it's, it's all internal work. It's all internal work to, 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 to begin with. Yeah. And I spend a lot of time at home. And like yesterday I was thinking I need to get out more. Mm -hmm. like I spend a lot of time at home like but i'm just i'm just consistently developing right yeah just in that you enjoy the solitude I i'm imagine. just in the zone i'm just like if i'm not content then 
might as well carry on, keep going hard. Yeah, you know no, hundred I mean? percent. And you know, it shows, and no doubt it will continue to show because that momentum builds. And I think, are you someone who's very similar? Because I've been doing like everyday work, right, just to build momentum, consistency. And is it something that you do as well? We, I feel like from observing your social media, it's the same thing where you just work every day. Not because um, you have to, but because you actually enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I think for me, yeah, honestly, I'm I'm like I'm scared of like I'm just scared of going backwards. I don't believe there's a middle. I believe you're either moving forward or backwards. Mm -hmm. And I think like as a man, we are happy when we're progressing. Mm -hmm. And I need to feel like I'm progressing. Otherwise I'm scared. Like I, I fucking hate it. Like it it, it haunts me. Mm -hmm. So I could look, I could even get emotional. Like it I'm just, I need to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. I need to. I need to for my for my mental health, for, my, for, for everything. I need to, it's not even like, it used to be a curiosity of like, oh, what are we capable of? Like, yeah. What, what are we truly, it's not even that. It's like, I need to know. I need, I need to always drive forward because mm -hmm. not even out of curiosity because there's always more we can do, right? Whether it's like with your character, your morals, your good deeds, mm -hmm. like charity work, um, trading, body. They're just always more. And like I said, I, I find, I think, I think like we find happiness when we feel like we're progressing. Mm -hmm. And that's why the problem with traders is like you con continuously going in a cycle, creating the same old results, feeling like low. Mm -hmm. Well, when you do something different, and then you see a difference, you start feeling happy because you start that. Because when, when everybody got into trading, they can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, like, yeah, like, and then the self-doubt kicks in, man, after multiple challenges lost and stuff, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It gets darker, man. Like some people message me like on a daily basis, man. They're like, you are the light, like you are the light in my life. Like, do you know what I mean? Like you're showing me what's possible mm -hmm. and everything. And yeah like your your it's it's all it's deep man because your world your world inside reflects on the outside yeah so you see the world do you know what i mean like we don't see it for what it is we see it for what we are or something so yeah so it's like i've experienced that i literally saw trees like trees trees look different to me today than they did two years ago mm. like since i've become mindful and present like i used to walk past like these flowers that were just literally by my house and i never noticed them yeah till recently and it's like it's insane because like even a flower like i've learned even a flower doesn't know how beautiful it is <laughs> but when you look at it i don't know like it it can realize probably it's, like it's just i don't know man it's just like everything will look different once your mind becomes clearer mm -hmm. because you're not also it's that survival mentality i used to be in that's weird it's scary i never want to be in that again mm -hmm. right so once you get out of it, you just don't want to go back. Like have so, to keep moving. Yeah, forward, yeah. like do you know what I mean. So I feel like people have a sort um, sort of a false expectation of success that once you get successful or start to see some results, that that's it. Now I can tone things down and start to take it a bit easy. But my understanding and thinking is, and experience so far is that you have to go even harder, if anything, and you have to put even more importance on being disciplined more than anything. Yeah, you have to go much harder to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's it's. It's, I, I didn't even know what it felt like. And then I just realized, whoa, like the moment, but like I said, I do it from a place of fear, but in a good way, like meaning like I stop going gym for a week or two. I'm, I get scared. Mm -hmm. I start seeing the results fall. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I stop with my mental preparation. I can start seeing complacent kick in, mm -hmm. you know? When I was in Morocco, I was having a great time, but I knew when to come back. You know, I knew when like I started to slow down, I'm spending too much time outside. Mm -hmm. It's like, how much can I develop as a person from being outside mm -hmm. exploring, you know? So, so like, I wasn't done. I'm not even done yet. I'm in the process of like the whole, it's, it's just, it's, it's a life journey, right? Yeah. Self-development. So I'm in the process. So I never want to like celebrate too soon. Like I, I always get thoughts that even right now, like just go to this island, go there. It's like, I can't, yeah, it's, it's too soon. Yeah, so that's I mean. it. it will happen though, it will happen. And you mentioned about the light of, you know, being the light in someone's life, for example, and I know I mentioned it before the pod, but you have like a, a movement, as you said, 
which is like the the this is like I was going to introduce this uh, podcast as like the Mooncast, right? <laughs> In honor of your presence, but um, but yeah, do you want to just explain what that is all yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, it's crazy. They're going to be like, um, so I suddenly like like I I know it came from like so the crypto days. You know when people used to say like when moon when moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I took that, yeah, subconsciously. Like I took that and just, I put it on everything. And like, even when I'm here, like I got in the car and I'm just like, I hope it's a moon drive. <laughs> like it just, you see, you see yeah. that laugh you just had. Yeah. That, that's it. That's what it does. It's that impact. It just, it just like, it's like doing everything to the best of its ability. Okay. Do you know yeah. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So it's like, it's like, if I said to someone, should we join a gym or should we join a moon gym? Yeah. He starts thinking more than just the gym, right? Yeah. yeah like yeah. even even like the girl might turn around and say to me, like, that was a moon dinner. Like it, it just <laughs> it, it do you know what I mean? Like I get you, yeah. it just makes it sound like amazing and it, it just makes me happier and mm -hmm. makes everyone else happier. Literally, like sometimes my mum and she's just like moon boy, like da, 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 like it's just um and then what happened is um before I knew it, I had people messaging me saying, like, how do I become a moon boy? Or moon girl yeah and i was just like whoa like hold on hold on hold on like we don't want this to turn into a cult like <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah. so i turned around and told the members there because it's, it's a very small group but i told i told the members in my group i was like i'm gonna put out a question yeah can you answer it for them like so i put a q a on my insta story and i was like what makes a moon boy a moon girl and it's, it's in one of my highlights i really encourage you to watch it because mm -hmm. It's, they're gonna, they're gonna, like, everybody's had a say in it. And they're like, you have to have self-awareness. You have to be present. You have to, some say you can't speak over others. Like, <laughs> you have to develop mindfulness. So they're just like, they've just put these skills or these attributes that you have Towards, to have yeah. to, to, to be a moon boy. But it's, it's, yeah, like, um, it's amazing though, to be honest. Like, no, it sounds, and, and, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have tied those two together, but I get what you mean, especially when you said like moon drive, I get it. You know, it's like a frame of mind. It's like mm -hmm. an affirmation in a way, but like just your own personal one, which is then obviously expanded and people yeah, have, have enjoyed and taken on. And it just goes to show like, look, at the end of the day, some people might feel like, oh, well, that, that sounds a bit weird or anything, but it's not because everything unplanned, like I bet you didn't plan to do that. I didn't plan it just to took, do it. Yeah, it just took its own, is it like made its own roots, you know, built its own foundation. And like, it's like, come on, like, if you can add excitement or happiness, even 1% to something, mm -hmm. why not? Like, why not? If it, if it makes, like, it's already made us happier. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> It's probably been like the happiest topic, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah it's worked. It's why worked. not? <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I think we're coming towards the end now. What I like to finish up with is kind of become a tradition now. Um, I'm trying to think at one point I was nearly close to doing a tradition of doing like a hot wing challenge. <laughs> but uh, luckily we never did that <laughs> luckily I've i think i would die for it. <laughs> so you got it I, I know you have yeah definitely um but basically one tradition question wise is uh if you can go in the past famous or not famous successful or not successful you know if you could meet someone uh to have a discussion with or spend time with who would it be it would be a prophet in my religion i'll what? be honest with you yeah um any particular? Do you, do you want? Someone? Do you want someone from thousands of years ago, or do you want someone Anyone. also like recently? Any time, any. So completely up to you. There's no right or wrong answers. It would be the last prophet. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Just because, just because personally, like um, I study a lot about him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like attributes and stuff, and just like it would just be amazing to meet a person that I am trying to imitate. I am trying to like. It's literally like I don't try to imitate people, but when it comes to like these people mm -hmm. yes i would love to have the patience you had i would love to have i would love to treat my future wife how you treated your wife i mm -hmm. would do you know what i mean i would love to have your tolerance like be be you know calm in um challenging situations yeah in life and stuff do you know mm -hmm. what i mean so mm -hmm. so yeah um yeah no i respect it I respect it 100%, um, you know, and it makes complete sense as well. And there, like I said, there is no right or wrong answer. It's about, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know where the question came from, to be fair. I just said it once. It came to my mind. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. That's how it should be. You know, the last thing you want is someone sitting there waiting, patient, you know, trying to think of an answer when there is no right or wrong. 
Um, but no, 100% appreciate that. Now, in terms of earlier, you mentioned about not wanting to go to university. So these, these are just like quick fire questions, yeah, yeah, like no not going to university, um, but you still did it, right? What was that like then for you? You know, that 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 battle inside. Um, so for me, um, again, like I like if I had a wish, it would be like I wish the skills I've developed now, like if I had them in the past, like I'm teaching like my sister now how to stop resisting the now. Mm -hmm. Because if you stop, if you like pain, pain like is mostly psychological. Right. And the pain that we experience, um, a lot of it is because like we want to be somewhere else rather than here. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went to uni, um, as much as I thought I accepted it, mm -hmm. it I was resisting it. I didn't want to be there because um, the moment I've discovered crypto and all this, like I just I wanted the moon life. Like <laughs> I, I wanted the moon life so quick, and I just like. Um, I'm grateful for finishing it. I'm grateful for my degree. I learned a lot of like skills, um, especially like with numbers and stuff and organizational skills, a lot of things like, but yeah, um, I, I had a good time, but like, like I said, if I actually voluntarily decided to do it, I would have probably picked somewhere better, mm -hmm. somewhere like I, I would have like done it to the best of my ability okay. but when you do something someone else wants you to do it you don't make the best out of it yeah and i'm not used to that and i don't enjoy not mm -hmm. making the best out of something fair enough right mm -hmm. no, it makes complete sense and final question then uh if you were to either go back in time or be able to advise who you were when you were going through that sort of negative period in that cycle or to advise others who are going through that now what would be your best advice to them and any sort of direction to point them towards Traders or non-traders? Traders. Traders. Traders, it would be literally to stop trying to make money mm -hmm. and focus on developing the skill. I would have saved myself a bag, like a bunch load of money, like like literally like life-changing money. Like if I just focused on the skill, but I always wanted it fast for some reason. I always wanted it. And the fastest way is the slow way it's the fastest way literally but the thing is with traders is they need to also like I ho hopefully from this interview like you've you've you know realized what skills you need to develop mm -hmm. like um you know i haven't spoke about all of them but like they need to know what they need to develop to become consistent and then go and develop those skills like mm -hmm. start today like go and develop them like do you know what i mean you could start by like improving your sleep like do you know what i mean yeah. but if you keep trying to make money, again, you are resisting the now. You you might, like, so, I mean, majority of them are trying to escape their nine to five. Yeah. You're resisting the now and it just causes pain because mm -hmm. sometimes you have to be here and accept that you're here to go there. You can't run from this mm -hmm. to run forward sometimes. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because you're running from something towards something. And you're not running to that like organically because you're just trying to like get away from this as soon as possible. Yeah. And I know, I know there's a dude that messaged me two days ago and he's like, I left my job too early. As soon as he got funded, he left. Yeah. And now he's in Jordan. It's like, do you know what I mean? But I know it's tough. Like I, I didn't, you know, maybe another time, but I didn't have the time to speak about how I balanced like working from home and trade and how I was lucky and saved up some money but I was more so lucky risking big and then just sat on that and focused on the skill but because mm -hmm. the balance is so hard balance in a job and learning the skill is so hard but if you can if you could focus on the mindset you've already just separated yourself from the 90 percent just just by having that willingness to just go this way and mm -hmm. you'll see the difference it makes no, definitely. So like putting that focus on the things outside of trading that are only going to improve your trading. As you said earlier, the, the slowest route is the fastest route. 100%. Couldn't agree. And thank you for coming down, Eunice. I'm sure we'll do another one in the future as well. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you for all tuning in once again. Uh, the description will have the links for Eunice, his social media, anything that he wants will be in there. So go check them out. Uh, make sure to subscribe as always. A lot of you don't subscribe. So make sure you subscribe, like the video, Drop a comment with your biggest takeaway and otherwise we'll catch you on the next episode.